Welcome to the Chess.com podcast. Hi, welcome back to the second Chess.com podcast. And today we're going to look at a puzzle. In this puzzle, it is uh, white to move and to win. Although it's uh, quite tricky to see initially how he does this. So I think it's best if we uh, think through the problem. Well, looking at this problem, the first thing I notice is that there are three threatened pieces. There's the uh, white rook on a1, the white bishop on d5, and the black rook on c2. So what should white play here? Well, capturing the rook would be no good because that would allow uh, an instant uh, take on a1 with a queen and uh, an easily winning position for white. In fact, uh, another move we can certainly uh, dismiss straight away is, is any rook move up the a file. Uh, let's say, for example, the, the rook comes to a5 hoping for a, a discovered check, but it's, it's too slow because the promotion on b1 with check ruins this idea and, and black has a, a comfortable win. So let's look at other possible rook moves in this position for white. Well, um, one which looks okay but actually isn't is the uh, rook to c1. With uh, the c1 square covered by the, uh, the, rook, the uh, bishop on g5, it looks as though white has this wrapped up any promotion would be recaptured but it, it's not quite true because if the black piece promotes uh, after capturing the rook here in, in this continuation we see that black has uh, the much more comfortable end game and uh, should win out quite easily here especially with the, the pawn on the board so the c1 move doesn't work. Well, maybe Rook can come to b1 and just blockade the, the pawn from promotion, uh, giving the white king enough time to, to recapture on c2. But black won't allow this, obviously, and uh, if he swings across to the f or, or h files, as in this case, uh, white's struggling again. Uh, he has to uh, come down with, it, with his bishop to uh, stop the, uh, the pawn on c3 going to c2 but this gives the black king enough time to uh, come back and support his pawns uh, then there's, there's very little that black can do here uh, or white can do and we end up with um, a scenario where the, the position is repeated uh, three times with our, our best move order Right, so we've, we've looked now at the, the rook moves and we've clearly uh, found that a rook move won't do. So it's, it's a bishop move we're looking for. Now white needs to check the black king and then recheck with the rook when the rook comes out to give the, the white king enough time to capture on c2. So there, there are two ways that the um, white bishop can, can check black king. The first one is bishop f6 check. Now here the uh, the king's got a, a, a dilemma. He can't come down to f4 because this will allow the rook to go to a4 with check and then the, the capture on c2 by the white king. So the, the king has to stay shielded behind the, the white pieces. So he'll have to come to um, f5 but now the, uh, the the white pieces are struggling. If the white bishop comes to uh, e6 with a check wall, then quite simply the king can capture on f6, and he's still shielding behind a piece. So the the e6 check doesn't work there. Um, the equally failing is this idea of, of a b4 check. Now although this um, you know, captures um, or, or looks to capture 
the rook on c2 fails because um, capturing on the, the, the c2 would allow the a1 uh, promotion square so the king can come down like I say the bishop can't capture on c2 because then it would be pawn on b2 takes a1 uh, with check so the uh, the white pieces continue to harass the black king but he, he gets behind his own kind of pawn shield and, and now uh, white's struggling to, to find a, a good continuation uh, the best for white here is actually b2 to get his piece out of the firing line uh, but after the black rook comes to d2 white's uh, struggling not only to, to draw this game or win this game but uh, he's, he's, he's looking at possibly even losing this game because after uh, king takes e4 here uh, white must uh, play very accurately if, if he, uh, he snatches the black rook off then c2 would allow uh, a black win so uh, what, should, what he should do is take on the c3 square with his white bishop and then the, uh, the black king comes to d3 and, and we have a drawn position there, there's nothing either the uh, white king or, or black king can do to assist their, their pieces which are all tied up in, in defence so that was our first check which was the bishop to f6 and, and, and that failed so now we look at bishop to f4 check and here this is a bit more promising again the king has to stay shielded behind one of the bishops and move to the f5 square but now the white bishops can uh, keep on op opposite uh, a, a different uh, ranks and different uh, files to harass the king up the board note how the, the white bishops always stay off the same rank and in doing this any capture by the king say the king was to um, to, to take on f7 here would allow the rook to go to a7 with check and eventually the king gets caught in the corner and is forced to take one of the bishops now it doesn't matter which bishop he takes um, the game is finished and it's, it's victory for white let's say he takes on g8 here, well after rook a8 check the king can recapture on g7 but now king takes on c2 and the black king is too far away to be decisive in this game and we have a victory for white well I hope you've enjoyed this little puzzle it certainly uh, shows the importance and the strength of, of the two bishops over the diag on the working together on the diagonals and um, also the, the idea that although pieces are, are on pre they can't necessarily be taken I hope you've enjoyed the podcast like I say and uh, I look forward to producing more for you soon goodbye Thank you for watching the chess.com podcast.